Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in A Course in Miracles workbook for students, part two of the workbook, section five, What is the Body? We are on lesson 262. Please read the What is the Body section in its entirety today or listen to the video on my YouTube channel or anyone else's. Let me perceive no differences today. Father, you have one Son, and it is He that I would look upon today. He is your one creation. Why should I perceive a thousand forms in what remains as one? Footnote 67. A thousand forms refers to a thousand bodies. These give the false appearance that the minds within those bodies are separate from each other, when in fact they remain as one. Why should I give this one a thousand names when only one suffices? For your son must bear your name, for you created him. Let me not see him as a stranger to his father, nor as a stranger to myself. For he is part of me, and I of him, and we are part of you who are our source, eternally united in your love, eternally the Holy Son of God. We who are one would recognize this day the truth about ourselves. We would come home and rest in unity, for there is peace, and nowhere else can peace be sought and found. And now I will read the commentary by Robert Perry and Alan Watson. This is the practice suggestion today by Robert Perry. Throughout the day when you have a spare moment, pick someone and silently say to him or her, You are not that one form. You are the mind behind all forms. Your name is not Maureen, for you are not separate. Your name is Father, for you are part of him. You are not a stranger to your father. You are his beloved son. You are not a stranger to me. You are my ancient friend. Commentary In order to move toward perceiving no dis differences, I must begin to let go of identification with the body, both in identifying myself with the body and in, in identifying my brothers and sisters as bodies. The body, says the reading for the week, is a fence. It establishes difference. It fairly screams, I am different. That is why everybody has different, every body has different fingerprints, different retinal prints, different DNA patterns. How can it be that in all the billions of bodies, no fingerprint is ever duplicated? Our bodies are saying, I am different. I am unique. I am completely unlike all of you. Love sings softly. We are the same. We are one. We share one life and that with God. It is the one sun that we would look upon today. The thousand forms are different. The life we share is one. We need not denigrate the body to do this. The body can become a means to heal the separation of our minds. We use the body to express our unity. We touch, we embrace, we care for one another. We assist one another. We use the illusion to transcend the illusion. In each body that comes before us, we see the one son. Let me not see him as a stranger to his father, nor as a stranger to myself. Each one I see today is part of me and I of him, and together we are part of God, our source. Seeing this is what seeing no differences means. Of course, I will still see male and female, tall and short, fat and thin, poor and rich, black and white, and brown and yellow and red. But I choose to look beyond these differences today to see the sameness, the one Son in whom we are the same, not different. Separation means differences, and differences breed judgment and attack. The vision of our sameness and our unity brings peace, and nowhere else can peace be sought and found. 
We choose not to let our sight stop at the differences, but to go beyond them to the oneness. We look and we say, This is my brother whom I love, part of me loved by God and part of God with me. Together we are the Holy Son of God. If you'd like to close your eyes, I will lead us into the meditation for lesson 262. Let me perceive no differences today. Father, you have one Son, and it is He that I would look upon today. He is your one creation. Why should I perceive a thousand forms in what remains as one? Why should I give this one a thousand names when only one suffices? For your Son must bear your name, for you created him. Let me not see him as a stranger to his father, nor a stranger to myself. For he is part of me, and I of him. And we are part of you who are our source, eternally united in your love, eternally the Holy Son of God. Let me perceive no differences today.
Thank you so much for joining me in that meditation. We will now read a section of What is the Body and Alan Watson's commentary on that section. We are reading paragraph 1, sentences 4 and 5. Identifying with his safety, he regards himself as what his safety is. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? When we see our safety in the body, we identify with it. We see ourselves as bodies. It is this that promotes and supports the ego's ideal of separation, judgment, and attack. To the ego, this is the purpose of bodies, although it tells us that the purpose is our own safety. It seems to me that it is beneficial then to recognize the frailty of our bodies. Their, tempora their temporary and e ephemeral nature. The sickness and the death of the body then, instead of being a fearful thing, can become a gentle reminder that this is not what we are. Why would we want to identify with such a vulnerable thing? Recognizing the body's impermanence and the brevity of its existence can impel us to seek a more permanent identity elsewhere. Becoming aware of the lunacy of seeking our safety in the body, we can begin to understand that our strong attachment to the body must come from some hitherto unsuspected motive, the ego's desire for separateness. How else could he be certain he remains within the body, keeping love outside? If we did not have this strong attachment to and identification with the body, if we realize that what we are transcends the body and dwarfs its significance, we could not keep love away from us. This is the ego's purpose in promoting our bodily identity, to keep love out. This is where our seemingly instinctive need to regard ourselves as body comes from, as bodies come from. Oh, let me, as bodies comes from. It is a deception and trap of our egos, and when we see this clearly, we realize that it is not something we want at all. The seemingly good reasons for identifying with our bodies in the course's eyes simply do not hold water. Bodies are unsafe vehicles. There is no security in them. Behind the seemingly benign reasons our ego set forth, there is, such, there is a much darker hidden motivation. The ego's blind belief in the value of separateness and difference. The Course is asking us to acknowledge this dark motive within ourselves and to disavow it, turning instead to the eternal safety of love itself which is our true nature as God's creation. Thank you so much for joining with me in Lesson 262. Let me perceive no differences today. Thank you. I love you. Have a great day.